great where that notch is in. Okay, rope is down. Stepping off the edge of a cliff. Dangling high above a lake. Dropping into a bald eagle's nest. For an eagle biologist, it's just another day at the office. For these homeschooled kids, it's a day they'll never forget. They're going to be taking measurements, weights, all that stuff. They'll be explaining things to you. The Arizona Game and Fish Department invited them and members of the media to Lake Pleasant for an up-close look at bald eagle banding. They followed these biologists to a nest perched on a cliff overlooking the lake. In it are two six-week-old eaglets. That's good news for this area where the nests have failed the past five years. Here at Lake Pleasant, we've got two bald eagle breeding areas. The one we're going to today is the newer of the two. And these, this pair started a few years ago. This is the first time that they've raised young to a, a, an age that we can ban them. Uh, so it's a pretty exciting day. It was an exciting year. 2015 was the most productive year for Arizona's bald eagles since they were listed as an endangered species in 1978. 59 breeding pairs produced 66 eaglets that went on to leave the nest. That's more than one fledgling per pair, sort of the national gold standard for bald eagle productivity. It's also nearly 20 more than average over the last 10 years. Bald eagles were taken off the endangered species list in 2007, but they're still protected by state and federal laws, and they continue to be carefully managed by Arizona Game and Fish. In fact, much of their success is likely due to the department's ongoing conservation efforts under the guidance of the Southwest Bald Eagle Management Committee. Biologists usually do this work without an audience. In fact, keeping people away from nest sites is a top priority because too much human activity can cause breeding pairs to abandon their nest. Lake Pleasant's such a destination place for boaters and fishermen and jet skiers. You end up having so much activity going on in this area that it eventually it'll drive the, bird, the adults off the nest. They won't be a, attending the eggs as they should. So each year during breeding season, Arizona Game and Fish closes areas around bald eagle nests that are especially vulnerable to human disturbance. In addition, nest watchers like Frank Mayer keep a constant eye on sensitive breeding areas like this one. I sit over there on that road and watch the eagle nest all day long to see what they're eating and, and what the birds' behaviors are and also to keep people out of the closed areas. After rappelling down to the nest, Kurt License places hoods over the eaglets' heads to calm them down. Yeah, that hood keeps them real docile. Let's do that other side. He covers their sharp talons with fleece booties. Okay. I know. Then he puts them in a padded bag to protect them as they're hoisted up the side of the cliff. All right, birds are yours. On to the belay line. Biologists Kyle McCarty and Tuck Jacobson take it from there. They each grab a bird and begin processing it. Okay. So I'll be able to tell from this leg measurement if it's a male or female. The females are actually larger. 13.5. This one is a male. He's actually not too stinky. Oh, yeah. I'd expect much stinkier. Every bird that gets banded has a band for the Fish and Wildlife Service, which is the silver one. Our other band is a nice color band, which you can see the, the identification a little better. So from a distance, we can read that and identify this bird. That'll tell us it was banded this year at this nest. And if we knew who the parents were, we could get that whole lineage. This eaglet will be known as 30 over Y. His brother is 30 over X. Right. Looks good. In the meantime, Kurt is taking an inventory of the nest and removing any potential hazards. There was some fishing line, pulled that out, and uh, there's also some, some ticks in there. So we collected some samples of those. We'll get that to our veterinary specialist and she'll be able to take a look. Prey remains, we found some birds, a lot of fish, striped bass. 
seemed to be their preference there. And uh, even some crayfish. So quite a few variety of things in there. Meanwhile, the eaglet's parents are flying overhead, screaming their disapproval. But they will return to the nest when their babies are back and everyone has left the area. The eagles are so invested at this point in the, band, the uh, breeding attempt that they'll come back within a couple hours. He's not going to like this one. Of course, disturbing an eagle's nest is never ideal. But by banding these birds, researchers can collect valuable data over the eagle's lifetime. All right, we'll do the weight and then he'll be done. Ready? Yep. Clear? Yep. Three kilograms, which is about six and a half pounds. In the nest, we had two male, uh, about five and a half week old nestlings. Uh, they looked very healthy. They had a lot of weight on them. They're not flighted yet, so they don't jump out of the nest when we get down there. And uh, we did a bunch of other measurements, and he looks right on target for everything. I was really surprised how big the eagles were. Uh, they said the adults were six feet um, wingspan, and then the babies were a lot bigger than I thought they would be. And the nest was big, too. Like, you could stand in it. You want to get a picture? I'd love it. 66 Arizona bald eagles fledged in 2015, and biologists banded 29 of them. That's 29 opportunities to learn much more about these magnificent birds. After posing for pictures, the eaglets get a quick spray bath to cool them down before they go back into the bag for the ride down to their nest. It's cool. I really enjoyed doing this. It's a once in a lifetime experience. Participating in this important work seems to have made an impression on the kids. It was amazing. I love it so much. That alone is positive news for Arizona's bald eagles. Hopefully these kids will grow up with this memory of, of this experience and, and carry that forward in their lives as an opportunity to do good for wildlife in the future.